On this video, I'm going to be talking about my chin mounted POV setup. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to set it all up, what camera to use, the pros and cons, and a little bit about why I think you should consider this setup for your own POV videos. Right now, this is pretty much the only alternative to a chest mounted gimbal setup. Alright, so before I show you how to set it all up, let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons. First, you don't need a gimbal or a chest mount. That's one less battery to worry about and one less device that can potentially fail. Without the chest mount, you won't sweat as much around the chest area and you won't have the thing restricting your breathing. You won't have to carry any other gear or attachments or batteries associated with the gimbal. All you need is a couple of spare batteries for the GoPro itself. Since you're carrying less stuff, that's less weight and less hassle. Second, the viewer sees what you see. With the gimbal setup, the camera is always pointed forward. So if you look at some beautiful scenery or turn to the side to talk to someone, all of that is just going to be out of frame. I've watched a few videos where someone mentions how beautiful something is that they're looking at, but their camera is facing the ground, and so the audience misses out. Also, you get a better feel of the trail, especially around turns, because your head is most likely going to be facing ahead of the turn, so you always see the trail. Gimbal footage, on the other hand, can sometimes be pretty bad in sharp turns because you only see where the rider is going after he finishes the turn, or at least after the halfway point. So throughout most of the turn, you either just see trees or a wall of dirt if the rider is going through a berm. One more thing is when you want to record someone doing a drop or a jump or maybe crashing, all you have to do is face their direction. With this setup, you're way less likely to miss out on some really awesome footage. Now let's talk a little bit about the cons. When you're standing upright, the camera hits your chest when you want to look down. This is annoying when you want to pull the chin down to drink water, or if you need to tie your shoes or something. When you're riding though, it's not a problem because you're bent forward, so your chest isn't in the way. So it doesn't really affect your riding at all. Pretty much the only time I notice this is when I need to drink water or grab something off my bike or from my bag. It's fine on a longer break when you can take your helmet off, but it is kind of annoying when you just want to take a sip of water. Secondly, you pretty much have to wear a full face. Can't do chin mount without a chin bar. Even though a good enduro helmet is well ventilated, it can still get pretty warm in the middle of summer. You won't feel it when you're descending or on short punchy climbs, but on a two hour climb, you might be wishing you wore a half shell. Then again, I can't imagine a gimbal setup is any more comfortable on long climbs. The last con would be that the camera choice is limited. You're pretty much limited to the GoPro Hero 7 Black. It's the only action camera that has good enough stabilization while also having usable audio. I originally used a GoPro 6, and the footage was usable but definitely not as smooth as the 7. On top of that, I had to use a separate audio device that I would sync in post, because the GoPro 6's audio is just terrible. Now, considering that you're saving on the cost of a chest mount, a gimbal, and gimbal related accessories, like batteries and such, I'd say it isn't a bad trade-off, especially price-wise. Now, I can't really think of any other disadvantages, and if the pros didn't outweigh the cons, I wouldn't be sticking with the setup. As it is though, I love how convenient it is, and the footage looks amazing. The natural gimbal that is the human head, together with the stabilization of the GoPro 7, hit that perfect balance of smooth, but not too smooth that it looks like you're just gliding down the trail. And I just love the simplicity of the whole thing. It's pretty much get up and go. Alright then, so let's talk about how to get this setup going. Obviously, the first thing you need is a full face helmet. If you ride downhill, then any full face helmet will do. But, if you ride mostly single track, you're going to want something with more ventilation. Luckily, in the past couple of years, a few companies have started making lightweight enduro helmets. I personally use a Fox Pro frame, but a Troily designed stage or a Bell Super are also great options. Okay, so now you have a helmet. Next thing we need to do is to attach a GoPro mount to the chin of the helmet. I personally used a long extension arm that I trimmed down to size. To attach it, first you have to cut into the rubber on the inside of the chin of your helmet. You need the width to be less than the width of the extension arm that you'll be using because you want it to be a snug fit. I'd go with half the width of the extension to start with and then you want to test that fit. Once you feel it fits in nice and snug, position the arm so that just the mount bit sticks out of the chin of the helmet. You don't want it to be too low here because it can get in the way of regular use when the camera isn't attached. You can always connect another extension if you want to lower your camera. So just mark the extra that you want to cut off the top and take a hacksaw to it. Now, just use some zip ties to hold the new mount in place. 
The top zip ties on my helmet go through a hole I drilled through the side of the extension arm. That's to make sure the thing doesn't wiggle itself out. On the bottom, a hole wasn't necessary, so I just put the zip ties to hold the mount firmly in place. And there you go, a nice and neat chin mount for your GoPro. Okay, so the next thing you need is a camera. Again, I recommend the GoPro Hero 7 Black. The older GoPros don't have as good stabilization or sound quality, and that's pretty much the reason you haven't seen a lot of people use this as their regular setup, because up until now, there hasn't been a good enough camera. Here's a comparison using the setup with the GoPro 6 and the GoPro 7. A couple more things to mention. Don't forget to use some sort of wind blocker to minimize wind noise. Also, depending on your height, you might need to use another extension to lower the camera to make sure you get the handlebars in the frame. Personally, I made this zigzag extension here that I screwed together so that I can not only just lower the camera, but also keep the lens centered. It's not really necessary to zigzag it like that, but that's just me being OCD. So that's pretty much all there is to it. I hope you guys found this video useful, and if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed.